Hello. Today I'm going to talk to you about solving Sudoku using a process known as simulated annealing. Simulated annealing is a process whereby using the same principles that govern the change of a cooling physical system, we determine what happens to a simulated system as a result of changing a parameter. To demonstrate this process, we'll use this sample puzzle, a daily puzzle from The Guardian, nothing special, which I have input into my program. Unlike in normal Sudoku, the first thing we want to do here is fill in the rest of the columns with random numbers such that each column contains the numbers 1 through 9. Clearly, at this point, there's still plenty to do, so why don't we discuss the steps that the program will take in order to solve the puzzle. The first thing that happens is that the program selects a random column, and within that column selects two random numbers. It then makes sure that with those two numbers in those specific positions, it knows the overall score of the puzzle. The score of the puzzle is the sum of the score of each number, where the score of each number is dictated by the quantity of that same number in the same row and box as that number. At that point, it flips the selected numbers and then finds the new score of the puzzle. That score is compared to the old score in a way that will be discussed in a moment, and then numbers are either flipped back or the process is repeated. Every time that the program passes through this loop, the temperature of the system is decreased by a nearly insignificantly small amount. There are two reasons why the numbers would not be flipped back. The first and simpler one is if the old score is greater than the new score. The other option is where the annealing comes in. If the new score is higher, we might still keep it. To find out, we use the Boltzmann distribution. Considering the difference between the old score and the new score, our energy for the system, we compare a random number to the number E to the negative difference of the scores divided by T, the temperature. If the random number is smaller than this value, then we keep the new configuration. Simple. Now, let's see the program in action. To help keep an eye on things, the program plots the score versus the temperature of the system, and every few plot points, it updates the puzzle and prints out that score. Now, let's watch for a while. Then again, this could take a bit. The recording you're seeing here is sped up a bit, specifically 200 times the actual running rate of the program. Every single point on that plot represents 1,000 iterations of the program's main loop. So, maybe you're wondering how long this takes. To answer your question, this recording was originally not one, not two, but three hours long. It does, though, this time, luckily for me, come up with a solution to the puzzle. Feel free to pause here and look it over if you don't believe me. Now, I know what you're thinking. How can it possibly take three hours? Here's the thing, though. If I run the program with no fixed numbers, it's actually possible for it to solve the puzzle and find one of the multiple solutions in under two minutes. Once you have fixed numbers, though, there are sorts of local minima in the score. If the program gets stuck in one of these minima and the temperature is no longer high enough, it'll end up there for the rest of the program's runtime. We can see that happen here in this graph that never quite got to zero. That line down there means that things have gone horribly wrong. Unfortunately, the solution to this problem is to have smaller decreases in temperature with each iteration of the loop to start from a higher temperature and, generally speaking, to make the program run slower. These factors, the rate of temperature decrease, and the starting temperature are known as the annealing schedule. They are actually two of the most difficult factors to get just right in a simulated annealing process. Before I go, I want to discuss applying a fit to the output data. We can see here that by applying a rough uncertainty to the score of the system at any given temperature, a nice logarithmic fit appears. This isn't unreasonable to expect, as we want the score to go to zero as the temperature goes to zero, and there's only so high that the score can get regardless of how high the temperature goes. The nice thing about this fit is that our value for A is nearly 5. While I'm not sure that every single puzzle would give the same value of A, 
I believe that this would be a common critical exponent for the process as a whole. While I'm sure that improvements can be made to my implementation of the algorithm, I hope that seeing this demonstration has improved both your understanding of the simulated annealing process and the various ways that it can be applied to different circumstances. Thanks for watching.